Hi everyone! So I'm in my homeschool room right now and I wanted to talk to you about our homeschooling journey and the whole reason we started homeschooling. Um, my daughters were in public school. They went to, here in Florida we have something called VPK which is Voluntary Preschool and it's a state funded program where kids go to school from 8 until noon. Is it 8 until noon or 9 until noon? Maybe it was nine until noon. I don't know. They go for a few hours every day, so they get the structure part of school and they get um, educated on phonics and their letters and everything. So once they start kindergarten, they can really hit the ground running. So my girls both did VPK and my oldest daughter started school in kindergarten of course and we had an amazing kindergarten teacher she was so incredible that we made sure our youngest daughter ended up with her for kindergarten as well so we were very blessed to have her two years in a row and she's one of those teachers just one of those teachers you know that that really was called to do the job she is a lovely lovely person and she cares for all of her kids. She truly loves every kid that comes through her door. She's just incredible. Um, and then we moved on to first grade. Now I know that not every teacher is going to be a Mrs. Garcia. I know that. I am not naive. I went through the public school system myself and I had my share of great teachers and awful teachers and and you know you take them and leave them and you learn from those experiences and I get that. Totally get it. But first grade was so bad for my daughter. The teacher had no control over the class whatsoever. None. And she was not a first year teacher. There was really no excuse for it. She just didn't care at that point. And she quit teaching after that. And her heart just wasn't in it. And it showed. And my daughter learned nothing that year. And she was also bullied that year pretty badly. Um, there was a kid in her class who it wasn't anything really that Natalie did. It was he could not control his anger and he would get mad at other kids and he would kick desks and hit and punch and he figured out if he hit and punched the kids who made him mad they would hit him back so he discovered that if he hit Natalie she wouldn't hit him back she would just drop and cry um, so that's who he went after he would get mad at someone and he would turn around and he would hit my kid and I was in the classroom one day when it happened and someone cut in front of him in line to get water at the water fountain and he turned around and he head butted my child so hard it knocked her to the ground and if he will do that with me standing right there watching him God knows what he does when there's no other parent in the classroom it was horrible I talked to administration I talked to the teacher nothing nothing was done um, and then when it came time for second grade I wanted assurances that he was not going to be in the same class as her and they wouldn't give me that um, and I said fine that that's fine you don't have to do any of that I understand your hands are tied clearly all of your anti-bullying posters all over the school mean absolutely nothing so I will handle my child's education myself and I took both my kids out of school and um, I know people think just bullying is whatever your kid will grow from it. My daughter stopped talking. She didn't talk at school. She didn't talk at home. She stopped talking altogether. Um, and that was scary. She she completely shut down. She didn't want to go to school. She cried when she had to go to school. I'm going to cry. And I wasn't going to do that to her again. And if I couldn't get assurances from the school who have anti-bullying, you know, big things in the, the community room and you know we all this anti-bullying rhetoric and they were not doing anything about it so you know I, I was working part-time at the time I was only working 12 hours a week I was working from home and it actually looked like I was in the process of losing my job which I did end up doing so now I am a stay-at-home mom and I homeschool my kids and it's wonderful and I love it but it was a really scary experience um I'm a planner and I don't go through, go with anything without thoroughly researching what it is that I'm doing. I did not research a thing. I looked at my husband and I said, listen, they're, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to help her. They're not going to make sure that she doesn't have to deal with this child anymore. And I want to homeschool. What do you think? And he didn't give it a second thought. He said, yes, absolutely. Let's do it. Let's pull them both out of school and let's homeschool and see how it goes. We'll give it a year. And, you know, 
they would be going into first and second grade. So it's not like I'm screwing up their high school years if I was really truly bad at it. There's not a whole lot that would have been lost in the meantime. You know, I couldn't suck that bad that they would have to be held back a year. So I just, this was in July and I wanted to start school in August, the same time that the public kids, public school kids were starting. So I had a lot of work to do. Um, now, now we're on one income and trying to homeschool on a budget when you know nothing about homeschooling and you're looking at all of these curriculum packages are, it's so overwhelming. It is so, I had no idea. I had no clue what these things were and they were so expensive and I didn't want to buy the wrong one and like blow our entire budget. So I bought a comb binder and I bought a bunch of reams of paper. You know, school supplies were just going on sale. So reams of paper were $2.50 each. So I bought a bunch of paper. I went on to Amazon. I bought ink and, you know, a whole system where you could refill your ink cartridges. And I got that. And I found free resources. I found workbooks online that were free. I found workbooks that I could buy for a dollar that you can print yourself. And I was a print and fool. And I printed and I comb bound and I made my own workbooks. And we did all of last year, all of our first year on um, workbooks that I made. And they did great. And curriculum that I thought would have lasted us an entire year, they were done with by December. So then I was doing it again come December. I was getting more information. And they just took to it. They thrived. And I, it was scary. And no, I don't have patience. People who say, oh, you must have the patience of a saint. No, I I do not. I am not a patient person. But I realized that it was more important to me that my children find their love of education and they had lost that. So now Natalie is in third grade. So we, we did our first grade, second grade year. Now we are in our second, third grade year. And Natalie loves math. We didn't know this before. She loves math. She is so good at it. So her curriculum this year includes half of her curriculum is math. She has so much more math than she would in public school. And Katie, my younger one, has ADD. She definitely has ADD. Um, but I don't care. I don't care that she can't be still. I don't care that she hangs upside down out of her chair and does her work on the floor as long as she gets the work done. I don't care if she climbs up in the tree with her workbook as long as the work gets done. You know, and it's perfect. It feeds into what they like to do. So I can work with Katie a little bit longer on math because she's also dyslexic. So she's ADD and dyslexic. And she would not get the attention at school that she gets at home. Um, yeah, I get frustrated with her because she is the one that doesn't want to do school. Natalie wakes up every day wanting to do school, but Katie, she's, she's my test. <laughs> she's my test. Um, but at the end of the year last year, our very first year doing it, I did the California Achievement Test with the girls. We did the online version, and they tested through the roof. Natalie was ninth grade for math and reading comprehension, and Katie was sixth grade in reading comprehension, and they both sucked at spelling. So even though they were doing great on the spelling test I gave them, they weren't retaining any of it. So I'm really glad that I did the test because it showed me where we needed to improve and the things I needed to change. So you know, at the end of the year, we gave them a choice. Would you like to go back to school or would you like to homeschool? And it's not going to hurt mommy's feelings, whichever way you decide to do. Um, and they both immediately, without giving it a second thought, said homeschooling. So we have really loved this journey. And yeah, so that's how we got started. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you know, hit the thumbs up down there and subscribe and I'll see you next time.